Hey everybody, what's going on? I have some breaking news. I just got a um, a tweet from Revlamon uh, at Revlamon. He's one of our uh, one of our community members here. He helps me uh, mod on my Twitch from time to time. He sent me this link and he was like, "Have you seen this?" I was like, "No, I have not. This is news to me. This dropped two days ago." Um, I am on the website CCN.com. Never been on this website before. No idea what it is. Uh, but it says Sega prepares console comeback. And then it says and they're about to get wrecked. I don't know. I, okay, well, let's read it. I, I just started reading a little bit of it. L let's get into it. Author Max Mueller. Mueller, I guess that's how you say his name. Says one journalist is teasing some big Sega news for June 4th, the day that Sony drops the PlayStation 5. June 3rd is the group's 60th anniversary. I didn't know that. I didn't know Sega was that old. Um, could Sega be prepping to re enter the console war? God. God, that'd be awesome, man. Okay. Let's read it and I'll give my thoughts on it. So, is Sega ready for a comeback? Sega, of course, left the console war after its Dreamcast in 1998. Since then, the group has focused on Sonic, Total War, Yakuza, and its other franchises. True, and Yakuza's, Yakuza's been doing very well in the past six or seven years, especially over here in the States, been doing very well. However, one Japanese journalist, Zenji Nishikawa, hey, I just rolled right off my tongue, okay, claimed to have a huge scoop on Sega in a recent live stream. That, and it should be shared in the June 4th issue of Famitsu, according to a report from Gematsu. Okay, so that's legit. I don't think a journalist would be claiming that. If it's going to be a Famitsu, that's some heavy-duty stuff. Okay, so Nishikawa says, My column in next week's issue of Famitsu is crazy. I got a huge scoop. It's a world premiere article and an exclusive. It may not be... Nikkei or Weekly Bunshun? I don't know what those are, so you all tell me in the comments if you know what Nikkei or Weekly Bunshun are. I have no idea what those are. But if you want to know if it's a scoop that big, it totally is. <laughs> what? What? Okay. I'm getting excited reading this. Okay, so the journalist further confirms he's talking about Sega and that this scoop is as significant as Wired's PlayStation 5 story from 2019. Okay. Considering June 3rd is Sega's 60th anniversary, there's reason to think the company is re-entering the hardware game. That would be a terrible idea. I don't know. I would buy it. I would buy it. I I've always wanted Sega to jump back in to the hardware game. It's always felt like there's a hole there. I'll finish reading. I, I keep trying to interject thoughts. I'll finish reading the article. Nishikawa notes his scoop isn't about a Dreamcast 2, but who's to say Sega won't release a brand new console for its big anniversary? After all, the group has released many versions of its old hardware over the years. True. Also, earlier this year, Sega revealed a new character related to its brand. This character's name is Sega Shiro, portrayed by Maito Fujioka. Is that how you say it? Okay. Why is that notable? Well, Maito is the son of Hiroshi Fujioka, who portrayed the Sagata Sanshiro character used to promote the Sega Saturn in the mid-90s. Okay, you know what? I think I've seen some of that, like on YouTube, some of those little uh, adverts and stuff for the Sega Saturn, which is one of my favorite consoles of all time. Don't even get me started. Why follow up a, market, a marketable character if you're not following up on the product he was meant for? It's almost as if Sega is gearing up for a big advertising push. Oh my god. Come on, let's do it. The competition is too heavy. The thing is, a new console would mean competing against hardware giants Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. We're already waiting on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 price points. Who wants to save for another console? Plus, the world is already in a financial struggle due to the pandemic. It is now really the time to reveal an expensive new box. Sega wouldn't be the only retro company looking to make a comeback either. Of all the groups, Atari is working on a PC console hybrid device dubbed the Atari VCS, 
that's even more competition. I've known about that. They, they've been trying to get that off the ground for years now, it seems like. The Atari VCS, I, I don't know how well that's going to do. We'll know for sure next week, but Sega should absolutely be wary. The world can only afford so many consoles. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. My take on this, I loved Sega when I was a, when I was a kid. I had, uh, I had a Super Nintendo. My friends all had Segas, though. I bought a Super Nintendo late in the game. Sega Genesis was a dope system, but it wasn't until Sega Saturn. I got a Sega Saturn. And I tell you what, my God, I played the Sega Saturn till it wouldn't play anymore. Like the disc thing locked up. The Sega Genesis even had like some of my favorite games <clears throat> of all time. Arguably my favorite Castlevania game of all time, right here. Castlevania Bloodline, Sega Genesis right here. Still got that, still got that bad boy. Boom, still in great condition. And then, I love the Valus Trilogy. If y'all ever played that, that was a lot of fun for my my young getting into anime days right there. Got that in great shape too. I, I, I've got some other Sega games over there, Sega Saturn. Dreamcast, of course. I mean, what just the level of games they had, man. You know, Sega's got so many great titles. If you could make if they could make a system, a console, and make those titles all of a sudden become exclusive to their console, they'd be sitting on a gold mine. If, if they were to market this thing properly and do business properly with the consoles. The reason Sega's failed in the past, the reason the Dreamcast failed, the reason the reason the Sega Saturn really didn't do as well as it could have, Sega CD, Master System, all that stuff. They don't back, they don't continue to push their systems. They, it's like they don't have a long-term business architecture for their consoles in mind, like Sony does, like Xbox does. You know, Xbox Game Pass, killing it right now. Sony, they, they're always... Their marketing is killer. They've always got a five-year plan. It's like Sega doesn't have that. But if Sega could put out a system and all these great games they put on other consoles, Yakuza, uh, Panzer Dragoon, even that, that's a great uh, that's a great title from Sega. You've got all these other classics from Sega that you could launch launch with. Like I remember back when I had my Sega Saturn. It was like Knights in the Dreams, it was uh, Shining Force, it was Guardian Heroes, Panzer Dragoon, it was like, uh, I think Sonic, uh, what was the Sonic game I had? It was either, I think it was a Sonic Jam or whatever. And Castlevania, I mean, Castlevania of course is an exclusive to them, but man, Castlevania Dracula X, arguably one of the best Castlevania games ever made, ever made. But anyway, this is big news, and here's the thing. I think a Sega system could absolutely work. What would I like to see Sega do? I'd like to see Sega partner with Xbox. I'm not a P I'm not a PlayStation fanboy, I'm not an Xbox fanboy, I'm a games fanboy. I love games. Give me great games. You know what I mean? I don't care what box it's on. Give me great games. I have a lot of PlayStations over here, but that's just because. That's just the way I went. They have the games I want. You give me great games. If Sega was to partner with Xbox on the Series X, if they were to do something with that company, Sega, I don't even know what that would look like. I don't even know. That, because, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've got this, I had an idea and then it was gone. So it, it, it didn't make sense as I, it, was, it was percolating in my brain here. So I think it just evaporated. But a Sega standalone console, yes, I would buy it. It couldn't be over $300, $350, but I would buy it. Because A, it's unproven, you know, and it, they have to back it. They have to back it, they have to support it. Sega put out some of the greatest games of all time some of the most memorable characters of all time and the marketing who doesn't remember the sega you know i remember going to see video games live and they did the sonic the hedgehog medley it started with green hill zone they did all the the big uh music pieces from sonic the hedgehog 
and it opens up with the Sega, like the choir sings it, and the crowd loses their minds. Every time I've watched on YouTube, like a video of that, and then seeing it live as well, every crowd all over the world loses their minds at the Sega thing. Sega's a big deal. We don't talk about them anymore. They don't have a lot of clout anymore, but they're a big deal still. The target demographic or the, the age range, I think, of people that played Sega back in the early to mid 90s. 90s kids that are grown up now and have careers, have credit cards and all that kind of stuff, they're still gaming. They'll buy this. They will buy this. Not every one of them. But there is a market for people. If you price it right, I'm not even saying this is what's going on. But if it is a console, if you price it right, you put some titles out there that people want. And what if they had like, what if it came preloaded with a bunch of like old Sega games, their best games from like Genesis, 32X, Master System, uh, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, Dreamcast, Dreamcast, look. I still got my Dreamcast hooked up right over here. Right over here. I will break out Power Stone. I'll break out Code Veronica. I'll break out Sword of the Berserk. I'll break out Record of Lodos War. Yes, Record of Lodos War on Dreamcast is one of the best anime licensed RPGs ever made. I'll put that up against any RPG licensed on an anime ever made. I'll put that up against it. Record of Lodos War on Dreamcast, amazing. But it's interesting. It's interesting, right? Because like June 4th, June 4th is Sony's big drop. PlayStation 5, it's the big drop. It's the, it's the big the drop of their payload on June 4th. And Sega's like, we have an announcement too. That's ballsy. That's ballsy. But also it's smart because it's like the whole video game world is tuned in to PlayStation 5. If they come in an hour or two after that PlayStation 5 showcase is over and the video game world's still buzzing, we're still wanting information, we're still wanting, you know, to, to know other stuff, we're, we're, we're tapped in, you know, our video game minds are activated. Sega comes in with an announcement to feed off of that high. That's smart. And that also tells me they have some smart business planning in mind. Now, is that going to happen? Probably not. <laughs> but it's fun to speculate on. I, I think this is cool news. And this is like, again, shout out Rev Lamont. I appreciate you, brother, uh, for shooting me that on uh, Twitter. Let me know what you all thought about that. Let me know what you think about Sega. You know, we never talk about Sega on this channel. I might do a, I might do a five. I'm doing these uh, five videos now. Raise five. You know what I mean? Like five greatest, top five, best five, all this kind of stuff with different things. I might do my five favorite Sega games of all time and go into it, go in on them. So anyway, you all post your comments below. If you like that video, throw a like on there, share it around social media. I'm not hard to find on social media. You can you can see the stuff popping up here. Kafka 20 xx Twitter, YouTube. I mean, not YouTube. You're right here on YouTube. But Twitter, Instagram. Twitch.tv slash Ray Kaufman over there. Um, yeah, this will be interesting. And subscribe to the channel if you dug that. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great night. Keep rocking. Stay safe out there. I'll see you all in the next video.